Hello and welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. Uh, this uh, tutorial is really born from seeing um, a really beautiful pinhole image, which you'll see here. Um, now, what we really want to do is know how to kind of en enhance the pinhole image to make it look even more kind of uh, older and uh, kind of uh, more rustic almost. Uh, so we've applied a few effects here. You'll see that we have a uh, layer on top here, which is a nice uh, rust texture. We've got a, a photo filter, and we've also used some um, layer masking as well to kind of create a bit of a damaged effect. The background layer, layer here is, is an off-white to make sure the edges look a little bit kind of more realistic. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's close that down. Uh, here's our rust texture, and here is our image. Now the image doesn't have to be a pinhole photograph. Um, pinhole is uh, it's, it's a lovely technique. Um, it uses a dark room, uh, and you can produce some really quite quite wonderful images. But you can obviously use any image you like. Uh, you'll see we've got a background layer here. It's uh, nice and white at the moment. We're going to come back to that in a sec um, and make some adjustments to it. But the first thing we're going to do is bring the rust texture in. So using the move arrow and just picking up that texture and dropping it into our image. Okay, so here we go. Here's our rust texture. Um, just going to make sure that layer's on top so we can see it. And we're going to transform, so we're going to rotate it around. So that's edit, transform, rotate. And we're going to spin that around. So if you hold shift, it jumps in nice increments, makes it a bit easier. And just lining it up. Okay, so obviously not quite the right size. So transform and scale. There we go, I'm just double clicking to commit. Now we go over here to create a blend mode. Now overlay is the one we're going to go for, but you can experiment with different sorts if you please. And then just drop the opacity as well just to reduce the effect so it's not quite as intense. Now this uh this image layer here wants to add a bit more oomph to it, so it's uh, looking a bit faint. So image adjustments and levels. Uh, we're gonna hit auto. And that's looking better. You can always pull in the blacks a little bit as well if you want to strengthen those. And then just hit OK. Uh, so looking quite nice. Now we want to create this kind of photographic feel by having a border around the outside. And the way we're going to do that is by using the, the scale uh, option again. So edit, transform and scale. Holding shift will stop it from stretching so it will constrain the proportions. And also holding alt will allow it to shrink from or shrink or expand from the center. Just bringing it down a little and double clicking to commit. There we go, it's looking good. Now the background is white and we don't want it to be quite as uh, clean as that. So clicking on the background and then edit fill. We want to fill it with a color. You can choose your color from your image. So you can select using the dropper whatever color we like. So I'm going to go for probably, let's go for around there. There we go, so looking much much more realistic now. So going back to the image layer, we're going to zoom in a little. And we're going to use the smudge tool. So here we have the smudge. And we're going to use the smudge tool just to pull in those corners, just to uh, make them so they're not quite as sharp. So just click and drag. And we're going to do all the corners like so. See it quite clearly on that one. There you go. Um, next, in the same place, blur tool. I'm going to put the strength up quite high on this so it's more effective. You can blur those edges. So just going around and blurring like so. Now, obviously, this takes a little bit of time. There is a quicker way of doing this. Uh, if you press, uh, if you click once, and then we're going to move over to the other end. We're going to hold down shift, click again. It joins the two lines or the two points together. So click, move to a new position, hold down shift, click again. One last time, click, hold down shift, click again. So it blows those edges quite nicely. So that's going to help it look a little bit more old fashioned. You could obviously do more work on that uh, if you wanted to. Uh, one last thing we're going to do to this is on this image layer we're going to add a layer mask. And that's going to allow us to add or take away certain parts of the picture. So we're going to use our brush. And just to demonstrate, we can take parts away 
or if you flip round to white, you can put them back. Um, and it won't do it to the actual picture, it will only do the layer mask. Now, it's not going to look very good if we use um, a very kind of circular brush, so we want to create our own brush. So in Window and Brush, brings up our brush presets, which are now kept in this little pot here. Choosing a brush shape which is um, quite speckledy. So just take, take a bit of time to look through. You may already have a brush that you, you like to use. Um, so yeah, so just choosing a brush. And then going down to Shape Dynamics, we're going to affect the size jitter. Going down to Scattering, affect the scatter, increase the count for a little. Uh, count jitter as well, up. Uh, there's lots of other stuff you can do. Um, you can play around with all these different things, um, but we're going to try wet edges as well. It makes it look um, like it's it's been stained, which is quite nice. And then close that down. So you can play around with those. Put your brush to be of a reasonable size. Okay. And then ensuring it's on black on the color swatch. Just clicking just to remove areas. Oops, a little bit too much. Zoom in a little. Um, when you're using larger brushes uh, for effects, then it can, if you're on a slow PC, uh, it can take a moment for it to work. There we go. Okay, it's not looking too bad. And then you can obviously change the brush size. You can work with different brush shapes and create different damage and so on and so forth. Um, so there we have it. Um, there's plenty more we could probably do with this image. We could play around with it in lots of different ways, but um, that has given you a bit of an idea really of how you can you can age an image and give it some some quite rustic effects. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and good luck with your own photography.